What's going on, people? Can everyone hear me well? Awesome. Okay. So, there's a lot of things to talk about and a lot of stuff to do. Um, in the meantime, while uh, a few people are gonna join, a few more people are gonna join, I'm just gonna check the, the chat because uh, there might be some questions here. Okay, so nothing too serious. I mean, like I said, you can leave your questions here. So there are a couple of things that I want to do in today's live stream, which is probably going to be somewhere around an hour or so. Uh, hello, Munish. Hello, Adita. Hello, Psycho Blizzard. Hello, Shivan. Hello Kair, hello Raju, hello Randy Tom, hello Shannon, hello Oni Lover, hello everybody. Um, Jaya Varsan, bro, tell me a best laptop for hacking. I have a video on the channel uh, for, uh, for that. Go to the video section on my channel and look for my laptop for penetration testing. But, um, you don't ne you do not necessarily want to watch that video because um, you might not need a laptop for penetration testing. You can just uh, get cloud computing for your penetration testing purposes. So, for example, you can get some um, you can rent super cheap computing in the cloud uh, with very good resources. Like for example, I think both. Digital Ocean and Paper Space, um, you can get a very good uh, computer in the cloud, virtual private server for less than 15 cents an hour. And for that, you'll probably get 16 gigs of RAM and uh, maybe 512 SSD uh, storage plus I think it's eight core CPU, so it's it's a good resource. You don't necessarily have to own a laptop to actually um, to actually be able to do penetration testing decently. Okay, how about Collab? Well, Collab, you mean Google Collab, uh, Mr. Randy? Well, if you're talking about Google Colab, I think uh, I think that would be a good resource as well. But to be honest, I haven't looked much into it, but I am going to look more into it because I'm interested in deep learning. And since we have this time when we are confined to our homes, one of the best things to do is to educate yourself and learn a new skill. So there's probably not going to be another time in Hopefully there's not going to be another time like this in the future, but now we have to take advantage of the time that we have to actually use it purposefully and not actually spend time watching TV or Netflix or playing games. Because um, since you've got nothing to do, since you're confined to your own home, there's probably not, uh, there's probably never been a best time to actually learn something new. And that's what I'm actually doing. Um, that's what I'm actually trying to do to actually uh, up my skills in uh, uh, penetration testing, bug bounty hunting, and also uh, resume my uh, machine learning and deep learning uh, skill uh, growing because I've kind of lagged with that over the past, let's say, a year and a half. All right. What's the best approach to audit Java applications? I don't know much about uh, Java applications, so I cannot answer. I cannot give you a good answer to that question now. 
Tell me something about Docker hacking, Shivam. I don't know much about Docker hacking. I've only did a uh, hands-on pen testing video on the channel about uh, Docker insecurity. So you might want to look into that. Do you use Kali Linux or Parrot OS? Shannon asks. Well, I use Parrot OS and we're going to look into Parrot OS in today's live stream. Okay. How to start learning hacking from zero? I mean, you can just plug that question into either Google or YouTube, which, which is probably the best university uh, right now. And you can just like get hundreds of thousands of answers to that question. I also have questions uh, how to get into, I also have videos on the channel on how to get into penetration testing and cybersecurity, so you might want to get into that. I'm not going to answer the same questions with every live stream. Skills matter more than OS. That's right, Pony. Um, Rodrigo de Almeida Silva, let's hack coronavirus. Well, you can do that by actually uh, participating into the open science project which is uh, folding at home so go to folding at home.org and you can donate your uh, CPU and your GPU to actually find uh, um, to, to actually this is so this is a protein folding um, not necessarily protein folding but it's a website where uh, you can contribute to the coronavirus uh, project, which actually looks for, uh, uses CPU and GPU to actually look for uh, places or for potential targets, target candidates, uh, drug targets that might be effective for uh, for fighting the virus and this is actually this is uh, there's a lot of people contributing to the project I also do that myself so you can just go there and let your computer run and it actually contributes with computing power to that project and not only that project but other projects that are ongoing to fight different diseases such as Alzheimer's uh, ALS and uh, other uh, diseases of the modern world folding at home that's right are Windows-based or Linux-based CTFs more difficult? I don't know much about CTFs, so... How do you stay motivated? Uh, good question. How do I stay motivated? I try to look at the bigger picture always. So the situation might not be uh, good right now, but it's, like I said, try to find the best in every situation. It's, it's how you... It's how you frame the situation. Framing is really important. Look up cognitive biases. Look up, you've got uh, probably a lot of time at hand, so you might want to look into um, cognitive biases and also the framing effect. It's how you look at the problem or at the situation that actually gives you um, or defines your mental state. Like for example, the situation might be fucked up right now because we cannot go to places, but what's the opportunity? The opportunity is to actually spend more time into learning something. And also, so I wanna spend more time into developing a new skill, and I also wanna spend more time into actually resting and getting bored, but not watching Netflix or some sort of like, I don't know, TV show or something which induces panic. I stay updated with the information day by day by actually checking official governmental news letters or updates on their websites, not watching some sort of a TV program or stuff like that. But to get back to the main question, how do you stay motivated? I stay motivated by actually trying to have a higher perspective on the situation and also trying to see the opportunity in every setback. Okay. Wouldn't Linux CTF be easier because it's open source and you can find more, more vulnerabilities? I don't know much about that. Do you like ponies? I love ponies. 
How to master PowerShell for hacking through shells and ebooks. There is probably quite a few good books on PowerShell. Look that up on Amazon. All right, fellas. So keep up with the questions. Keep posting them in the, um, in the live chat. So the agenda for today, we'll be talking about, so I'm looking at my phone right now. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, what I'm actually doing at the moment in terms of cybersecurity, what I'm learning. We'll also be looking at some reports from uh, HackerOne and uh, Pentester Lab. Uh, we might also be doing something with respect to how to simplify your back bounty. And that's, uh, we're gonna be specific with respect to their search for directory brute forcing. Um, yeah and of course we'll be going to attack defense labs to do some hands-on stuff which you'll probably like rodrigo de almeida where are you from well my friend yo soy de rumania i believe that you're speaking spanish or portuguese right Shannon Satter, do you find Hack the Box useful to learn or practice? Shannon, I haven't been using Hack the Box for the past year and a half. So that's my answer. Uh, to learn or practice, the best way for me is to actually do real hacking, which is bug bounties. So I don't play CTFs. The only, the only challenges are the real world challenges and the realistic scenarios that I'm doing on um, on attack defense labs, but still that's like very limited amount of my time. What I spend most of my time with is real hacking by doing bug bounties. And actually I need to up my game into reading more reports because these are probably two of the most efficient ways to actually learn and become better and grow a skill in penetration testing and bug bounty hunting, which are only two aspects of the higher cybersecurity field. How can I learn Stego, beginner level, any books? I don't do steganography because I don't think that's real world. So you got my question. You got your question answered. Katerina Haiduchenko. Katerina, why didn't you write your name in Russian? Are you from Russia? Okay, hi Christian. Is it much more easy to pass OSCP exam with a lot of write-up to pass exams without Metasploit? I'm not sure I understand your question. Is it much more easy to pass OSCP with a lot of write-up to pass exam without Metasploit. I still don't get it. So if you can please ref uh, reframe your question and make it more uh, understandable. Oni Lover, are bug bounties mostly web development? No, they aren't. You can do bug bounty on web applications, you can do bug bounties on hosts, you can do source code review, you can do uh, mobile bug bounty hunting you can do reverse engineering so bug bounty hunting can be done on multiple types of uh, uh, vulnerabilities and platforms hopefully that answers your question all right fellas so let's actually start so keep um, keep asking your questions in the um, in the chat and I'm going to I'm going to move my screen so that you can see what I'm actually doing. All right. So first things first. Let's see. Okay, so in terms of bug bounties, I've said so I've told you guys that one of the best ways to actually learn 
bug bounty hunting is to read write-ups and pentester lab is a very good place to start because you have as you can see here you have bug bounty write-ups ever since 2012 so there is a lot of stuff to learn from here these guys are doing a great job and they also send a weekly newsletter so you might want um, you might want to subscribe to their newsletter and um, actually get good information in your inbox and of course uh, you shouldn't my suggestion would be to actually don't read everything that's in here uh, if you're going for back bounties and if you're a beginner you might want to focus on a particular type of bug uh, and just learn that for example because you can do a shitload of stuff in in bug bounties and um, you don't want to be a jack of all trades and master of none you want to be super focused and let's say for example you could just uh, learn xss and read all the reports for xss uh, that's what i'm actually doing at the moment so i kind of uh, focus on xss and also on uh, idors and i want to be focusing on these two up until i get like frequent and recurrent uh submissions in XSS and IDORS, so IDOR is um, Insecure Direct Object Reference. And once I get good with these uh, two, I'll actually move into other types of bugs. I want to say that I'm quite good with recon right now, and my personal recon methodology is, as I've told a virtual friend on Twitter just a few moments ago, um is like my so my recon methodology is around 12 pages of step-by-step -step stuff that i have to do so a very practical tip would be to actually uh write down your methodology because otherwise it's going to be a complete chaos and i still find that i have to further develop my methodology and keep it up to date like every now and then so uh, yeah be be very methodical and be very like I think that if you're met methodical you're very you're gonna be very efficient write stuff down organize and automate and we'll be looking into uh, I'm gonna give you a brief uh, preview in how I do automation in terms of bug bounties later on in this video so you might want to go and look into this list of bug bounty write-ups and check for example for xss and look you have 742 results probably this is going to be like a couple of hundred of uh, a couple of hundreds of uh, of write-ups which is more than than you need to let's say for example idors 226 so there's probably more than 100 write-ups on idors alone so think about that more than 100 write-ups and you want to be a jack of all trades in bug bounty, bounty hunting i wouldn't advise for that so be super focused go for csrf or xss or um let's say for example um authorization issues um what else broken access controls stuff like that so yeah this is a good place to look into how people have reported and how people have made money with back bounties another resource is uh the activity on hacker one so let me see if you guys uh, have other stuff in here have other questions how to learn xss you don't need to learn a programming language just read write-ups read write-ups practice there's a lot of um 
I'm actually going to show you a few resources to, to learn super hands-on XSS. Oni Lover, Waterfall, a local hacker says to become a jack of all trades. Well, if you want to follow that advice, be my guest. I, s I don't agree with that and I've, I've told you my reasons. How to learn mobile plan testing. That is an entire subject in, in its own. I would actually devote maybe three, four or ten live streams just to talk about mobile plan testing. There's a lot to talk about with respect to that. Okay, getting back. So, Hacker One Hacktivity, another very good place to learn from. So, for example, if I want to learn XSS, I want to be looking at the disclosed and the newer ones. So, these are all we have eight, we have so the newer ones issues with the filters 1743 results for xss there's a lot of stuff to read here let's see this one just a few days ago so we don't have any details we have no details just a summary this isn't useful let's see this one or this one yeah so there is more details in here DOM based XSS it allows attackers to insert malicious JavaScript into the page vulnerability description this module uses to unescape HTML entities so we have DOM based XSS by inserting HTML encoded XSS payload. Proof of concept. Steps to reproduce. This is the good stuff. You can actually see how that bug bounty hunter, security researcher, or hacker, however you might want to call them, uh, did and how they thought on approaching or on finding this vulnerability. So this was reported to node.js so they actually have uh, probably installed uh, node.js locally and then installed the html module and then as you can see they edited some of the files some i mean the app.js that's just about it so there wasn't too much of a deal with this one and this was actually the payload the XSS payload that triggered the, the vulnerability so this is less than which actually means like that so we have in this case Let's open up a notepad. This is probably like that. So, image, SRC, on error alert, XSS. And that's it. So this is the decoded payload, I would assume. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so, this is how you actually learn I mean I find for myself personally that's one of the best ways to learn and I still have to tell myself that I need to read more reports because I don't do that as often as I want or as frequent as I should there are other people who can learn by actually reading books or theoretically I'm just not one of them I actually learn better by practicing myself and by reading what other people have done and also I would say the third would be by actually looking at uh, um, videos at the University of YouTube alright so we have another one here which doesn't tell us too much but a summary so anyway, I believe that in these thousands of results, 
you would find at least a couple of hundreds with explanatory step-by-step -step proof of concepts. If we look for IDORs, there are a few, but there might be other ways to actually filter for IDORs, I believe. So anyways, we have Hacker One. We'll be looking into Attack Defense Labs in a moment. This is my Discord server, so you might want to join. I think it's going to be, should be in the description of this uh, video. Okay. So, what's the status of the questions? Haksa, you skip my question. So, Haksa, let's see. Let's actually start here. Uh, are write-ups enough to learn bug bounties? No, of course they aren't. But it's a very good way to learn. So you shouldn't rely on any resource alone. You should stack or, yeah, you should stack resources when you want to learn something. Such as, for example, reading bug bounty reports or write-ups, doing hands-on on different platforms and also let's say for example watching videos on YouTube. Okay, hopefully that answers your question. Haksa, if I have two months only before OSCP, what will prepare me better, EC, CPT course or HTB? I would probably say with a fairly um, uneducated opinion that I would go for the ECCPT if you have money to spare because it's a more structured way as I would assume um, I don't know a lot about e-learn security courses I think that's a an e-learn security course, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would rather go so, for something structured that actually teaches me methodical and uh, organized step-by-step uh, -step into what I want to learn, penetration testing in this case, uh, instead of just going on hack the box and try to figure out how to exploit a machine on my own in two months. So. At this moment, I'm fairly like um, unmesmerized or unfascinated with Hack the Box and similar platforms, but I don't know. It's just it's just me. I'm more for the real stuff, like trying to. I'm not actually saying. I think that Hack the Box has some labs that are kind of real world but i don't know much about that because i haven't looked into them okay fellas keep on with the questions keep on with the questions cuantas lenguas platicas I would say that maybe three, so it's Romanian, so this means how many languages I speak. Well, I speak Romanian, English and Spanish. I also know a little bit of French, a little bit of German, and yeah, that would be, that would be it. Hello Nuno Realista, or Realista, welcome. So let me see what are we on with the agenda or where are we on? Of course, uh, if you fellas want to learn penetration testing with Python, you would be going to Edibit. For example, you would be going to Edibit. So now we're moving on a little bit on the uh, scripting side of things. Um, I find that in terms of uh, for example, bug bounty hunting, Python has been very useful to actually automate a lot of the stuff that I do. 
So knowing Python in recon and in also in other aspects of bug bounty hunting and penetration testing is really, I would say, what puts you at a higher advantage uh, over people who do not know how to code or who do not understand a programming language. So I would learn Python and I would learn a bash. Uh, and I will show you, I know just a little bit of bash to, to uh, be able to get around uh, and I still have to get more deeper with bash because I find it really, really useful. And also if you wanna learn Python, I would start uh, with hands-on challenges like for example from Adabit, which is super free so there's like maybe at this moment more than a thousand challenges uh, for Python in, uh, in Adabit and as you can see I haven't been too active here in the past month or so so shame on me for that I have to get back into doing challenges uh, but of course, I think I can motivate that with the fact that a uh, shameless plug, I've worked on uh, my Python for Pentesters course, which you can get, I believe it's for $9.99 right now with the code that I shared on uh, Twitter a few days ago. So this is my Python for Pentesters course. This is specifically for penetration testing. Uh, getting back to add a bit, as you can see here, more than a thousand Python practice challenges. I've done some walkthroughs, some hands-on challenges in previous live uh, videos, so you might wanna look into that. And as for my Python for Penetration Testers course, this is the curriculum, if you wanna look more into that. Okay, now going back to XSS, this is a very very good resource that I just started using a couple of days ago um, so the guys at Portswigger the creators of burp have actually I think they've decided to uh, not do the third edition of the web application hackers handbook but to actually uh, do this web security academy online which is free at this moment hopefully hopefully it's going to be free for a long time uh, and these materials and labs are really really good so for example view all learning materials if we go and click on see detailed view as you can see, I've done a little bit of progress here. Just started a couple of days ago doing XSS. If you go to cross-site scripting, starting here. So cross-site scripting, look. So uh, cross-origin resource, no. I mean cross-site scripting. It starts here and it goes all the way down here. So there is a lot of stuff on cross-site scripting alone. And if you go to these resources, it explains XSS, it has hyperlinks. Like for example, we go into the reflected XSS. We have another section completely on reflected XSS alone and of course we have the labs so reflected as XSS into HTML with nothing encoded if we look into this so I've already solved it um, to solve the lab perform a cross-site scripting attack that calls the alert function I think it's here so it's script alert one this is probably the simplest and there you go, you have an XSS. But of course, uh, they explain all about it. So Web Security Academy is one of the go-to places for hands-on learning web security for penetration testing and bug bounty hunting. All right, so what else is on the agenda? 
end question. How are we on time? So we are 36 minutes in. I'm going to answer your question, guys, at the end of this video. I want to do a little bit of um, hands-on stuff. So let me check the agenda. Like I said, you can also join the Discord server, which is uh, linked in the description. You can connect with me on LinkedIn, of course, and on Twitter. We've talked about Python, bug bounties. I've told you what I'm going to be focusing on in the next, uh, I don't know how long. So I'm going to be focusing on learning XSS. I hate XSS. I don't like it, but it's, it's probably one of still the most reported vulnerability and I need to get a, some traction in back bounties and I feel that learning XSS and IDORs, which are kind of low hanging fruits, is going to be a good way for me to get some consistent results. So yeah, I'm focusing on XSS and IDORs. All right. Now let's let's do a little bit of hands-on stuff. So I'm going to go to attack defense labs. So 37 minutes in. All right, attack defense more than 1700 labs. So what better way, again, I have to repeat myself, what other time than now would be better to actually do some hands-on stuff? So when it comes to attack defense, this, so this platform and also the WebSec Academy are the only two at the moment that I'm actually using uh, when I kind of feel not burned out but when I feel like I'm not making any progress with any of the bounties so with real hacking I just uh, to kind of decompress I come to attack defense labs or web sack academy to actually up my skill so they keep on adding labs and sections which is I don't know it's it's really good their subscription is, uh, I believe, $40 a month. So if you've got the money for this, it's well worth. Um, I do believe that they have a few free community labs, but um, there are only a few. So maybe they have like five or 10 community labs, which sucks. And if some of the guys working at the Tech Defense Labs are looking into this, come on guys, from 1700 freaking labs, you should give more labs, more free labs to people so that they would get a feeling of your platform. So it's like two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, 10, 12, like 15 labs out of 1700. Come on guys, more free labs. Okay. Um, what should we go for? These are the sections. Network Recon, Real World Web Apps, Forensics, Exploit Research. I want to get into that at some point. Endpoint Security, APIs probably, Log Analysis, Blue Team stuff, Cloud Services, awesome service exploitation web technologies android pen testing let's see what this is all about so what do you say guys shall we go for one or two of these labs right now tell me Okay, so this is Barrett OS. 
this is what I'm using and I'll get back to this after doing if we have more time after doing some of these labs let's actually start with this one bad permission probably an easy probably an easy uh, challenge real world challenge and let's actually run it it was played 40 42 times on attack defense labs zero times by me Android mobile applications need user permission to access different resources or to perform restricted privilege actions these permissions are listed in the manifest which is packaged in application one of the telltale signs of the malicious applications is that they have permissions irrelevant to their advertised purpose example an alarm app with permission to send sms of course in this lab you are provided with apk of a heart monitor application and use apk tool to extract the apk and analyze the manifest file so our purpose is to analyze the android manifest xml and identify the unnecessary suspicious permission let's do it So, any other details that we need to know about? APK file is kept in the home directory of root user. So, present working directory. We're in the root. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Tell me, guys, if this is better compared to the normal view. Looking for your feedback can you view what I'm typing here in the console say yes or no or bigger okay Adrian it was it is zoomed in it's even bigger now bigger it's even bigger all right so we need to look into this and we have we have the um we have the apk and we we are being told that we can use the apk tool which is installed so apk tool is a very useful tool in doing um, in analyzing android applications this is very useful if you're doing bug bounty hunting for mobile applications i've been using it in mobile app pen testing and mobile bug bounty hunting so and i'm also using it in uh i've been i've been using it in both windows and in parrot os so in linux uh, in Windows, I'm not using it as a standalone application like uh, in the command prompt here. So I'm not using it like APK tool. I'm actually using it as part of a um, of a suite called APK Studio, I guess. So let's see. It's called APK Studio which is used for analyzing Android applications. Yeah, this is it. And once you install this uh, APK Studio, you'll be able to have a nice graphical view um, of the decompiled application. And you'll be decompiling the application with APK Studio itself. So, the bare bone usage of it is apk tool we can do help and there's a lot of stuff in here but in this case what i'm only interested in is apk tool d which is for decompile i believe and then i have to um, specify the file name which is sample heart monitor and let's see again our objective is to analyze the manifest so we need to look into the manifest xml and identify the unnecessary suspicious permission 
I believe the flag would be probably the permission. Provide the full permission string. Yeah, so we need to look for a permission that's unnecessary or suspicious. Oh, look, it completed. So we're gonna go into the sample monitor and there you go, you have the Android manifest. Uh, let me actually give you one way to look into all these files. So even in, um, in the APK studio that I was telling you about that I'm using in Windows, they don't have a freaking search function. So that sucks. But in Linux, for example, if you decompile the application, you can simply do a grab minus RNV, RNW minus E, I think, wait, so for all minus E, and then we're looking for a certain uh, string, let's say password. And this uh, grep is probably the, the, best, the best tool in Linux. Uh, this is actually going to look into all the files and folders in this, uh, in this directory, in these files and directories, and it's gonna look for this string for password. And it doesn't find anything. Let me make sure that I typed uh, this correctly. Yeah, so it is. Let's go, let's go into the RAS. Let's go into the values. One of the, one of the files that you'll be looking for when you're doing mobile pen testing or mobile bug bounty hunting is to look into rest values and strings. So if, you, if we look into strings.xml, there's not much in here, but in like bigger applications, you've got a lot of stuff in here. So let me go back into here and repeat my command and actually look if this actually works. So I'm looking for this, which is in RAS values strings and see if I get it. Yeah, so good to go. Now let's, uh, let's clear this. And now we need to look into the Android manifest for suspicious permissions. What would a, so the question is, what, what permissions would a heart rate monitor need, for example? Would it need permission to your Bluetooth? Well, I believe so. It requires permission to the Bluetooth because that's how it communicates with the application. So that makes sense. That also makes sense. Camera. Mm. So if this is a camera based uh, heart rate monitor, it would, make, it would make sense to require permissions. I mean, this is not the permission, but the name. So, okay, let's assume that this is an external heart rate monitor and it requires permission to Bluetooth, to wake lock maybe, but set debug app. This is often used to make the application. So this is not used. This is usually not used in production, but, but more in uh, development phase for the creators or the developers of the application. I might be wrong, but I assume this is what's used for debug to actually give a higher level of verbosity when it comes to logging errors so that developers would actually know what to fix. Now, in this case, we have set debug app in a production application, which is not good because you don't want to, you don't want to have like, you don't want to have a certain individual who is not a developer of that application to be actually able to see potentially sensitive information about the application. So I, I believe this is uh, 
this is the answer that we're looking for Android permission set debug app if we copy this and do a uh, search for it Android permissions allows an application to turn on debugging for another application how can be abused malicious applications can use this to kill other applications that's interesting but I don't think this is the official source where would the official source be or maybe there's an official source let's see here this is just a list of all the permissions yeah so that's a no-no so to get back I believe this thing might be our answer let's just verify yep so we can just stop this lab what else is in there let's go back maybe do another one bad permissions let's see okay 52 minutes in voice is low can you can someone else confirm that you aren't hearing me well because Nick Hill says that voice is low Please confirm you're hearing me loud and clear, fellas. So, do another one. These permissions are listed, one telltale sign. In this lab, you're provided an, with a APK of a heart rate monitor use AAPT to extract the permissions from the APK so in this lab we're actually learning how to work with another tool I haven't this is the first time I'm hearing about AAPT so that's interesting use AAPT to extract the permissions from the A from the APK and identify the unnecessary suspicious permission maybe it's it's the same permission as for the previous lab but let's see so lab link lab link let me make this bigger you should actually see it well all good here but on earphones Giuliano is hearing me well all right fellas let's go back so we have the same application or a different application sample expense manager okay sample expense manager we need to, uh, similar to the heart rate monitor application, we need to extract the permission as help. Let's see. So AAPT permissions. This is what we're looking for, I guess. AAPT. PT a, a APT permission or permissions permissions or permission I think both let's see permissions and sample expense manager is not a directory let's do permission okay so this is not how you use it let's grab for permission we need to specify a 
So we need to specify the file with minus a, I believe. Still. Maybe we need to decompile it. So do the APK tool minus D sample manager, not minus D, but just a D. And then without the minus a maybe like that interesting so let's go to Mr. DuckDuck AAPT dump permissions So we can look um, with the list command into the contents of the package. We can dump stuff. Okay, so this is the command we're looking for aapt dump permissions clear clear aapt dump permissions permissions apk so yeah this was the right command what is the application that we have the application so these guys were rushing into creating more labs and this is not a heart rate monitor application this is actually a expense manager application so what would an expense manager application permissions should be to access the network state maybe to get account to use credentials maybe write external storage maybe read external storage yeah because that's it probably builds a local database and uh, uh, dumps information into it permission dump and camera but this one com google android c2m permission receive I'm not sure what this is which is why we should copy it look into Android permissions allow apps to accept cloud to device messages sent by the apps service malicious apps could cause excess data usage Maybe this is not a suspicious permission because if the sample expense manager connects with the cloud and it has a cloud backup storage, um, it would make sense to have this permission. But what about the dump? dump allows the app to retrieve internal state of the system malicious apps may retrieve a wide variety of private and secure information that they should never normally need 
So this belongs to permission group development tools. Okay, so this is a much better candidate for a suspicious permission compared to the previous one. So, so let's actually see if this is the flag. And it is. All right. Okay, let me stop this one. I think we've passed the one hour mark, fellas. Let me just check. 101 all right we've got 24 of you here so what I want to say is that uh, I'm gonna answer a few more questions and then I'm actually gonna leave so please make sure to leave your questions uh, in the chat right now uh, Vlad Asave Stam Akasa yes we're staying home um, so please leave your questions here and uh, I'm gonna answer a few of them. What I wanna do in a future live stream, which is probably gonna be soon, is that I'm going to show you, for example, how I'm using, um, let me make this a bit bigger. What was it? How the hell do you do this? How do, how do you increase control shift? Yeah, like that, I believe. Okay. So in a future live stream, which is probably gonna be soon, I'm going to show you how you can use uh, bash to simplify commands and automate, for example, uh, parts of your recon process in a bug bounty hunting situation let's say for example uh, and this is this is actually one that I'm using so for example if I want to do a dir search dot py minus minus help for example if I want to do dir search brute force directory on Google for example I will do dir search dot py and then I'm going to specify the URL with the minus U, HTTPS, google.com, then the word list, let's say user word list, big word list .txt. Then I'm gonna have to specify the number of threads. Uh, then I'm gonna have to specify the extensions, let's say XML, um, PHP, TXT, ASP and whatever other parameters that I want to specify. Now, if you're doing a lot of bug bounty hunting and if you have like a few directories that you want to look into, um, it's kind of, it becomes cumbersome to actually write this down every time. For that, to simplify my work, I simply do dirt search, then I specify the URL let's say google.com, then I specify the extensions, XML, PHP, and then I just hit run. So I've actually simplified this entire thing into this thing. And I'm actually gonna show you how I did this in a future live stream because I don't wanna keep these live streams too long and I, ha and I still have stuff to do today. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, in the near future um, okay now let me actually look into a few of the questions you fellas have mentioned here how to learn XSS I've already told you what I'm using If you can tell about just some resources or tips, black hat, gray hat, how to learn mobile pen testing. I think I've shown you a glimpse of what you can do with mobile pen testing, black hat. Okay, Giuliano Villaca, Villasa, Villaca. What about Golang? What do you think? That's 
a really good one for automation. I think it's much better than Python and maybe at some point in the future I will be learning Golang or Go uh, because I think it has a lot of potential in terms of uh, simplifying a lot of your work. But as for now, I just don't have time or space on my priority list for Golang. How long does it take for you to find your first bug? It depends. Uh, I've been like, I've been into this. I found a lot of bugs, but nothing. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I'm in this, I'm in bug bounty stuff for like maybe eight months now. And I don't have any bugs that has been paid for. So I have no, uh, bugs rewarded with money. I did find a lot of stuff. I did find a lot of duplicates. I did find a lot of low impact bugs, but I didn't find any bug that would actually be solid and I would be paid for. I'm just, I'm not gonna just let go of this. I'm too freaking persistent. And in the future, hopefully in the near future, I'm gonna get my, my first paid bug, so um, I'm really looking forward to that moment, but until then I have to keep on building my skill, I have to keep on hunting, and um, I have to keep on learning, like what I'm doing now, learning XSS and IDOR. Uh, and I would say that I've participated at probably more than 50 or 60 bug bounty programs so far, and I've learned a lot of stuff, especially when it comes to recon and mobile pen testing. Okay, so Beto asks a question in Romanian. What would you recommend to a kid, a high school kid in 11th grade, which is interested by informatics? Well, informatics is a very, informatics or computer science is a very broad category, sort of speaking. If you're asking what I would recommend to someone interested in cybersecurity, I would actually look into, I would actually look at a list of what are the fields in cybersecurity because cybersecurity is a very large field and you want to be super focused this is what i always and i will always be saying you cannot i think that you will develop expertise if you focus a jack of all trades would have uh far fewer chances to succeed or become an expert because it is by definition a jack of all trades. If you wanna become an expert in something, you have to focus on a particular thing. Now for you as an 11th grade, 11th grader, if we talk about cybersecurity, I would be looking at a list of things or subfields of cybersecurity, like for example, penetration testing, bug bounty hunting, uh, let's say intrusion, did, uh, sys not system administrator, but a blue teamer, some sort of a blue teamer, incidents response analyst, malware engineer, uh, exploit researcher. I mean, there are a lot of titles that you can achieve in cybersecurity and I would pick one Let's say, for example, web application penetration testing. Let's say, for example, penetration testing. You can subdivide penetration testing into web app, mobile, source code review, IoT penetration testing, network penetration testing. And you can further divide them into more categories. Let's say, for example, um, web application penetration testing, XSS, IDOR, SQLite, broken access controls, uh, XEE, what else? CSRF, SSRF, and you would become an expert in one of those. That would be, that would actually be my suggestion or, or how I would go or how I'm actually going about it. Hopefully that answers your question, Battle, and hopefully you understand what I'm saying in English because you've asked the question in Romanian. Uh, Iheb Hamad, did you take any certification on Linux? If yes, what is the best for you? No, I have not taken any certification on Linux. 
and I'm actually not interested in taking any other certifications at the moment. I took the OSCP to prove myself that I can and um, I will be taking some other certifications in the future, maybe from the offensive security because they've updated the OSCP and that's super awesome. Uh, they've, they've got like, I've heard that the PDF the initial PDF was 300 something pages. Now the PDF, the learning material for the OSCP is like more than 800 pages with all updated content. And that's actually really good. So I would be actually doing something from offensive security like OSCE or OSWE or something from eLearn security, but not in the near future, maybe a couple of months from now, maybe next year. Uh, right now i'm not into certifications i just want to learn super strictly and super focused on the topics that i've been saying in this video like xss and idors and maybe if i have more time i want to be learning on how the internet works at an infrastructure level like communication networking protocols uh, cloud computing cloud infrastructure stuff like that because that would help over the long term Hopefully that answers your question. Stephen Gibney, I've been on HTB for a month, claimed my first 10 points, done about 10 boxes. In the meantime, I've had planning on doing more. I live in the UK and really want to get in the industry and I don't know where the best looking for remote jobs have you have. Have you, do you have any tips? Remote jobs. This is probably a very big topic at this moment because we are confined to our homes and we actually have to, just a second. And we actually have to find ways to work from home. So I think I've talked about remote work in previous videos but uh, a few of the best ways to be able to learn about opportunities in terms of remote work in cybersecurity, penetration testing and bug bounty hunting, I would be looking on Twitter, on LinkedIn and on Discord. So on Twitter, if you follow InfoSec jobs, on LinkedIn, if you connect with people from the field, there are and on Discord, there are good chances that you're going to find something uh, worthwhile. You might be, especially if you have, not necessarily if you have a good resume, you can build resum your resume on the go by actually doing write-ups for the HTV boxes that you've uh, owned. You can do write-ups, post them on Medium and stuff like that. Or maybe not on medium because they've uh, the medium guys I don't like them anymore because they uh, they started actually restricting your access to the number of articles you can read per month so that fucking sucks I don't like them anymore so you would be writing your <laughs> you would be writing your write-ups on maybe github.io or maybe hacker noon or maybe other free platforms and actually add those to your resume and in terms of actually finding remote jobs bug bounty hunting you don't need to send anyone a resume you just go on HackerOne, bug crowd and other platforms and just start looking for bugs if you find something that's worthwhile and if you're working on a program that pays bounties that's your remote job but of course there are a lot of people into it and you have to be very good and that's actually a factor or that actually depends specifically on the amount of time you devote to learn and to practice your skills so like i said at the beginning of this live stream it has never been a better time than now because you cannot go out you cannot go to the restaurant you cannot go do stuff outdoors you're very restricted and confined to your own home and instead of watching netflix and tv and drama and panic on uh, media you would be focusing on developing your skills as a bug bounty hunter i hope this answers your question Iheb, what bug you focus on when you do bug bounty i just talked about this 
extensively throughout the entire video. Simply put XSS plus I doors. This is what I focus at the moment. All right, fellas, we are one hour and 16 minutes in. And if you do not have any other uh, question, I'm actually going to call it a day uh, because I've got other stuff to do and uh, I will be looking forward to uh, do more live streams uh, in the near future so uh, hopefully I've been helpful today. <laughs>